Hello, I'm Lonnie. I am Single Sarah. And we don't have a name for this, so we're just going to call it the Untitled Nerd Network Game of Thrones Review. And uh, we didn't get around to like doing one for, se or for Season 7, Episode 1, and then Episode 2. So we're going to lump both of those first two episodes in with a single uh, monster-sized review. And then we're going to talk about some fan theories and just disclaimer. Um, neither me nor Sarah know everybody's names. And there's so much crap going on at this point mm -hmm. that Sarah has like these cliff notes on her phone that she's yes, having I to do. reference. And we're like looking at character names and holy crap, who is that guy that did that? And mm -hmm. that woman that was over there. <laughs> So we'll see, but we're going to be uh, reviewing episode one, which was called Dragonstone, mm -hmm. and episode two, which was called Stormborn. And uh, to begin the season, uh, Daenerys is at Westeros, and they show up at that uh, at Dragonstone where mm -hmm. the Dragonlance uh, is supposedly. The only reason I remember this place is because. Uh, old dude banged the red witch on the map table. That's the only reason I remembered Can't where that place her. was at. I cannot stand her. <laughs> because when, when like they walk in, I'm like, hey, that's where it happened. That's where it Lord. happened. So, um, I mean, overall, really good episodes. This, the first six seasons have been really good, but, mm -hmm. you know, the episodes just kind of go like yeah, that. Yeah, kind of up and down. And this is the payoff. Like this, this episode, season premiere, like, it started out with a bang. Like a big bang. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. uh... It was great. Dude's name. What? The dude's name that did the Red Wedding. Oh! See, this is the kind of crap that we we have to rehash. Oh, crap. Because that guy only name? pops up whenever there's somebody to kill. Walter Fr Walter Frey. That's Frey, yeah, 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 yeah. Frey. Walter and so Frey. he's up there going, oh, you know, he's got all of his people there that helped, uh, you know, kill the Starks during the Red Wedding. And and it looked like it was only the men. Did any women kill any women at the Red Wedding? I don't know 100% of that. I can't I remember. But I noticed it was all men, though. Yeah. That and, were sitting in the room. You know, they're all there. And, you know, he's, oh, you know, thank you for... You know, helping me kill everybody at the Red Wedding, and we did all this stuff, and you know, mm -hmm. screw the Starks and all that stuff, and then, uh, you know, they all drink their wine, and come to find out it's poisoned. And <laughs> Oops. It's not the dude, but it's uh, Arya Stark. She has popped up with her little face disguise, and I didn't know that she could like change her voice too. I didn't know that was part of it. I didn't know that either. Like maybe they just learn it. That was just crazy. But yeah, I mean, you know, I was like kind of confused, like why he would be doing that after all those years, because it's been a while, and then it's. it's I mean, you know, he was like a pompous asshole, you know, bragged he about it. He was, everything. and like the first thing he said to one of, was it one of his daughters that was sitting beside him? He said something really mean to her. Oh. He said something mean to her, and then he also told her not to drink yeah, it. Yeah, not too. to drink it. Because, number one, I don't think she had anything to do with it. And number two, he wanted somebody to survive and go tell and the tale. That, yeah, that's true. And so, word's going to spread now that Arya's going around killing people. <laughs> which, in my opinion, was probably the worst thing. Because now, Cersei's going to be looking for her. Mm-hmm. Because she's next on the list. You know, she's got this list of people she thinks she's killed the Hound. She doesn't know that he's still walking around somewhere. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Cersei, I believe, is next on the list. Was she going to kill Jamie Lannister, too? I can't remember exactly who was on the list. Let me, uh... But anyway, let's, let's continue. I want to say he was on the list. That sounds right, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure he was. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, this, this freaking season is like <laughs> boogieing because Jon Snow is now the king in the north. Mm -hmm. And you've got like this monstrous army of White Walkers marching south. And 
uh, the hound actually had a vision mm -hmm. and he said that they were actually walking around the wall where the wall met the sea and I've actually read on the internet that they if you freeze frame it you know the the map of Westeros you know that it scans around during the opening credits mm -hmm. it changes from really? like season to season yeah like they show different areas you know, like if a new area pops up in a season, they started showing the areas across the narrow sea where Daenerys was at whenever they started I over think there. About that. Yeah, like that city with like the big pyramid looking place that she spent some time at. They started showing it on there for a while and now it's not there anymore. Now if you look during the opening credits and they're scanning around the map, uh, you actually see the north is covered in snow a lot more than it was. And the ocean at the border of the wall has now frozen over. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that now. I didn't even notice that. Yep. I wish I had a, uh, you know, I wish they had like a, a picture that I could pop up there and show everybody. I never even noticed that. I just know like it opened, like I noticed it didn't open like it usually did, but the, the opening credits didn't come like right there. It just like started with, you know, Arya. Yeah. And then it showed the credits and stuff, and I was like, oh, well, this is different. <laughs> but yeah, like where the I'm trying to find like there's actually a picture floating around on here somewhere. But uh, but yeah, I mean this this oh man, I, I'm hoping I don't forget anything <laughs> because there's like what like 17 different plot threads going on right now. There's. There's always something going on in Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's never ending. Oh, God. But, uh, I always wondered how, because I think they said that this summer has lasted 10 years, and now the winter is here. It's and, coming. uh, it's a, a bad one. Yeah, I know, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, apparently that's the longest it's been in a very long time. And we've got a lot of different things going on. We've got Cersei actually figuring out how to kill the dragons. God. And I hate to say it. I hate to say this. My prediction, at least one of them's going to get that arrow. It's, it, it, it's, it's coming. At least one of them. And it's probably going to be right through the head, just like that one was. But so, I was reading something somewhere where the dragons will regenerate. I was reading some... No, I read that somewhere, and I wish I could remember. There's no way. Because, you know, you've got there dragon like bones was, down in was, the... There was some way, like, the dragons could, like, get harmed, but then they would... I don't know. Yeah, but it's not going to help them if they take a gigantic, you know, 14-foot bolt through the head. Because, like, on TV shows, I like going on, like, after, you know, the show the show, and they'll post something... And then you'll read, I like reading people's comments, like to see what they say. And one of them had something to do with the dragons. Like if one of them were killed, it would just come back somehow. Yeah, but you know, you also run the remember. risk of reading some bullshit whenever people I know, post stuff like that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but just, just saying, I, oh. I mean, I really wish one of them would just burn her up. I mean, that'd make me feel better. Here, there, there are a couple of fan theories. Like, I know we haven't even, we've barely scraped the surface, but one fan theory, and first, I'm going to talk about the plot point behind this, and then I'm going to talk about the theory. And that is uh, Samuel Tarley, who is at that citadel with all mm -hmm. the books and everything, trying to find out how to kill these White Walkers. And he gets into, like, the forbidden books and everything, and come to find out, old Jorah's there. He's got this dragon scale that mm -hmm. started out a little patch on his wrist to spread into like this black nasty scaly mass all the way halfway across it's his chest and uh, first Sam discovers that dragon glass can be mined at Dragonstone. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? <laughs> Woo! It's like, huh, I wonder where we can find dragon Mine glass. <laughs> and you look at the map, Dragonstone. <laughs> I mean, call me crazy, but that's probably the first place I would have gone. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, they he ends up sending a raven and be like, hey, guess what? 
This is where you find it. Yeah, and he runs into Jorah there, and he sees that he's got all this crap, so he ends up looking for a cure. Well, he finds a supposed cure Ooh. that is forbidden because it's too dangerous to even do because you screw up and touch that and you have dragon scale. So he ends up making this like medicated bomb, like a herbal bomb. It's supposed to heal this up. And apparently the cure is to take a knife, a good old fashioned sharp blade and cut the skin, the dragon scale off and then put that that goo on it and uh that was rough i bet that that hurt like hell because the rough. first what? initial cut and that old like oh. nasty yellow it's like and you rah. can hear them cutting through it like oh yeah because he actually saws it oh like i had to mute my tv it was <laughs> <laughs> to me it was one of the <sighs> i don't like I don't I'm, know. I'm uh, used to seeing really gross stuff on Game of Thrones, but that was just, I don't know. Like, you could just hear it. Easily one of the top three grossest scenes in the entire show. Mm -hmm. Easily top three. Um, probably number one, because... And he had to sit there and take it. And well, granted, he did out. have him like a little leather strap in yeah. his mouth, and he was like... Argh! It's like, you know... He, He's like, oh, don't scream, because, you know, I guess he's afraid of waking everybody up and them coming in there and finding it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, in, in my opinion, it's not going to work. Um, I, I think that he will eventually be cured, but I think that it, there's going to be, like, some kind of really swift, mean kick in the nuts that's going to be like, you know what? All that pain was completely unnecessary. Here's a very easy cure to it. I've totally forgotten because there's so much that goes on, but um, how did he get the? How did he get that in the first place? I can't, he I uh, he was he had captured um, Tyrion Lannister and was taking him to uh, God. I'm trying to think. He had captured Tyrion Lannister and was going to take him. I believe many to. Adventures. Yeah, he was going to take him to Daenerys. I think was going to turn him into her. Maybe? Yeah, I think that's what he was yeah. doing. And so they had to go through the ruins of Valyria, which is where the Targaryen kingdom was. But there was something called the Great Doom that happened. And oh. everybody seems to think that it was a meteor that hit and completely wiped everything out. Wow. And it's like this old nasty... Like the sea is poison and steaming, and um, anyway, everybody who comes down with dragon scale, they eventually it progresses to the point where it covers their entire body and then mm -hmm. begins to seep into their internal organs, mm -hmm. there and hardens their brain and everything, and it drives drives them crazy with like pain and agony. And so, whenever somebody gets really advanced dragon scale. They load them up into a boat and drop them off in Valyria. And I so there's all these stone the men crawling around on the walls and stuff. And they were going through Valyria as like a shortcut or something. Cause so nobody... how, did, how did Tyrion not get it then? He got, he, he I guess his clothes or whatever, he got pulled down underwater. And when Jorah jumped down into the water to save him, one of the stone men grabbed his arm. Oh, and nobody knew that he had okay. it. And he I looked at it. I remember that part. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But I, I actually would like to go back and rewatch that episode. Because seeing Valeria was like that the Great Doom as they call it really just fascinates the hell out of me. Because there's not a lot known about it. Mm. All it is is you know, that was where all the dragons were at and that was where the you know, the Targaryens had their huge kingdom and everything. It was completely off from Westeros. It was like on the south, southern end. And then when the meteor hit, they evacuated and basically established on King's Landing. That was kind of where their family dynasty began to fall apart. And it has that whole big country is like now ruins and poison and, you know, steamy nastiness and stuff. But I, I'm going to have to do some reading on that at some point. 
Yeah. It fascinates the hell out of me. But um But yeah, I really do think that he's not gonna be cured this way and it's gonna end up just being a slap in the face that he went through all that pain for nothing, that there's some kind of easy fix that they've not found yet. Because they have kind of been in a hurry. They haven't really... Yeah. Of course, he had to be because he's going to ship him out to Valeria the next morning to be with the stone man. <laughs> um, That's just... So it's going to have to come on pretty quick. And have you noticed... Well, I'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> the fan theory that I read says that Samwell is actually the author of Game of Thrones. What? Like, you know how he mentioned to the guy in the Citadel that he was writing a history and he called it the history of King Robert or whatever and the yeah, guy's I like, oh, that. you're going to have to come up with a lot better name than that if you want people to read it. And so, yeah, Sam is actually writing a history and a lot of people are thinking that this whole show or the whole book or whatever is actually the history of everything that happened is told According by him. To Sam. Oh. Yep. That is interesting. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Sam. He's having to empty all that stuff. Like that's just so nasty. How did How did you like the uh, the little montage that they had of him like filling soup bowls, and then emptying oh, chamber pots, and nearly puking every time? Like he did I don't. It. I felt bad for him. I felt really, really bad because that was nasty. That was nasty as hell. Because you know that, like that showing that's like days and days and weeks of it happening every single day. And what was bad is like the suit that he was putting into the bowls didn't look much different no. than what he was dumping out. <laughs> Think about that. Mm. Think about it. Come on, let's let's get suit? a good. Oops, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the soup stunk that bad, though. From one end to another. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you could tell that Jamie Lannister is kind of becoming tired of Cersei, Queen Cersei. Can you blame him? Yeah, because he's, the time that he spent with uh, uh, Brienne is kind of turned him into that good guy, you know, that kind of like the, the good guy that he could be. He's always been like kind of like on the line. like He's always been a good guy. Him, it's just the, for lack of a better word, the love for his sister has kind of, you know, blurred that. and He's done a lot of stupid crap for mm -hmm. her. Um, but yeah, that, I don't know. I, I kind of see that coming to an end and I honestly, I hate it, but he'll probably end up getting killed doing like something that. that's gonna probably either get rid of her because there's some things that he's done that i like and there's some other things like season one you know push it all he started becoming the good guy that everybody loved when he got his hand cut off mm -hmm. and you almost forget that he's missing that hand because they yes. haven't really addressed it much lately i know his father wasn't crazy about it i will say the only it character that I've absolutely loved to death since day one, Tyrion Lannister. Thank you. That is my favorite character. I mean, because <laughs> he reminds me so much of myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, I actually need to get me a t-shirt. It's got his say, it's like, uh, he's like, that's what I do. I drink and I know things. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's actually very smart. He's very witty. He's got yeah. a sense of humor. I mean, his sarcas his sarcastic remarks. I love his sarcastic remarks. I am so happy that he has found his place. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, for a little bit, he was the Hand of the King. Mm-hmm. Was, wasn't he? Yes. To uh, Joffrey. Yeah, for just a little bit. And then they framed him. Yeah. That whole scene where... Oh, the scene where Joffrey died and, well, before he died. Well, like, see, when... He was giving him a hard time at the, <laughs> that gathering. Oh, my God. That was... I just wanted to well, see, the first dark. time you really see Tyrion was in the very first episode where, uh, you know, Joffrey's not king yet, and he's standing there, and 
you know, he's all like acting stupid and Tyrion slaps him across the face. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to tell mother. And he like slaps him again. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, well, I forgot about that. That was great. Good times. You could tell Joffrey was a little shit down too. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I actually, I can't remember who it was that was walking with Tyrion after that. And he's like, you know, he's going to be king one day and he's going to remember that. And he was like. Well, he did. Okay. But it's okay, it backfired. And then, like, an episode or two later, you see Tyrion, like, pissing off the wall. (laughs) He's like, I wanted to stand on the Great Wall and piss off the edge of it. And then it shows him, like, a couple of scenes later actually doing it. (laughs) Like, Jon Snow standing there talking to him. That's great. Like, that was what... That was one of the things that... Like, that whole first three or four episodes that established the character was, like... Mm Mm-hmm. But uh, what else? What else do we have going on in season seven so far? I know we've got the hound running around with the the dude who's like the six times resurrected follower yes. of the Lord of Light, and uh, there's no telling where that story's gonna go. I think everybody's gonna end up together at some point. Uh, Arya is. And getting... also showed like a softer side of uh, the hound too. Oh yeah, yeah. With him burying him. Yeah, the, the, the father and daughter yeah. that was in the, the house that they stayed in. And uh, I think he has, I think he does have some really good sides. Aside from he does, Nicole, he's just a hardened warrior. Yeah. That, and you know, you got to look at his brother. He's, he's like a classic case of uh, in fiction where you see the younger sibling or he's the less performing sibling that got overlooked, overlooked, overlooked yeah, or treated like crap because he wasn't as like, good. And, yeah, and his face. His yeah. Face. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that has something to do with it. The fact that, you know, half of his face got burned off and he's scared of fire. Yes. Um. But yeah, I mean, there's... I, I'm really excited because Arya's found out that John is the king of the north. And so she's heading north now. See, like they don't, some of them, like they don't know why they're all alive. Yeah, it's... and what is really funny about that is John is getting ready to travel south of Dragonstone, and I think she's going to show up right after he leaves. So she's probably not going to see him. Because if you look at the next episode, like the teaser for next episode, I don't know if you've seen it. They actually show Jon Snow walking into the hall of Daenerys. So next episode, they will come face to face. Now, it might be the very end of the episode. I don't know. but And that would kind of piss me off. <laughs> but uh, they are moving things so much more quickly they now. They are. It's, just, it's, it's going. Because used to, somebody would send a raven from King's Landing to Winterfell... And they'd be like, oh, two episodes later, they'll get it. Now, it's like the next freaking scene. They're holding it in their hand, you know. <laughs> and, I mean, th- there's a lot of crap. I mean, they're they're mashing it all up. It's like they know there's only, like, 15 episodes left yeah. in the last two seasons. And they're like, you know what? We have to get, like, five seasons worth of crap crammed into these 15 episodes. I'm so, just... I mean, we've already seen so much payoff mm-hmm. just in the first two episodes. Yes, they've there's been a lot in them. We've had a crap ton of characters die. The 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 sand girls. Oh, all them. I didn't like. Them. Man, no, I mean I didn't like them either. But they were nice. starting to come into their own. That's the Game of Thrones way. Mm-hmm. You you have somebody who's introduced as an asshole. The minute <laughs> they become a good good person, they die. I don't know. I really didn't see anything good. <laughs> Well, they had become. I mean, the other they had become one, fighters for Daenerys. I think. That was the whole deal. They were heading north to take, uh, or they were headed. They were actually going to be the ones to hit Casterly Rock. Because they sound like they're still a little mouthy and. Hmm. Here's, do you remember? But there was, there's one girl left though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's one of them left now. Now, the dagger. remember, early in the early in the series, Tyrion Lannister griped to his contemporaries about how he was supposed to be the rightful heir to Casterly Rock, mm-hmm. and his father was like, "Screw you! I'm not going to give it to you." Yeah. Do you think 
that him telling Daenerys, hey, hit Casterly Rock with everything we've got because that's the real power of the Lannisters. Do you think that's a real tactical move, a personal thing, or a mix of both? Like, does he want his family driven out of there so he can have it? Like, is that the one thing that he's like, I'm going to do it for me. This one thing is for me because screw them, you know? Or is it a real legit like tactical move that he's making to get rid of the Lannisters at like their their home island. It might be a little bit of both. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know because I've never seen Tyrion be selfish when it comes to public decisions. Mm -hmm. About the only thing he's selfish he's about is women and wine. Yeah. Everything else, you know, uh, so I'm not real sure, but it, that was the first thing I thought. That was actually the first thing that popped into my head when he told her, hey, hit this place. I was like, oh, good for him. Mm -hmm. But I was like, it's not really his style to just get open revenge on somebody. That is true. He's not a very revengeful person. No. I, I mean, at the same time, you know, if that would have been me, I would have told her, hey, hit King's Landing, Dragon's Blazing, everybody we've got, yeah. and mop up the pieces. But he's like, nope, nope, we've got to <laughs> go in there and basically starve them out. I'm and sure Cersei would have found a way out somehow. That well, woman, she... I'm... <laughs> I don't know. I just... What? <laughs> I don't like Cersei. I really don't like Cersei. I cannot stand Did you her. ever like her? No. Ever? Even when they marched her naked through the streets and people were throwing no. shit at her? she deserved it. I, I can't stand the woman. I mean, her love for her children, yeah, I mean, that's awesome. I mean, she really loved her children, but she coddled them so much, and she, like, she could see that they were doing a bunch of things wrong, like Joffrey especially, and she just sat there and, you know, let him do whatever. I mean, I know he's a king, but... Here's the thing. She could kill people. She could do whatever. But what got to the point where I was like, you know what? She could bring peace to the world and pardon everybody and start completely over, and I would still hate her. The reason for that is she ordered the killing of the dire wolves in season one. Whenever she knew that her kids were at fault... She still pressured Robert into uh, having Ned Stark kill the two dire wolves mm -hmm. because, you know, one of them had bit Joffrey. I remember that. And so she was like, she was letting me put down, and, you know, Robert's like, oh. He, oh. That was some garbage. That right there, it's like for some reason, you know, you can kill people. You know, you can go through and, you know, slaughter a house full of kids. But once you kill an animal, <laughs> like a domesticated animal in any type of TV show, you are now my mortal enemy for life. I don't care. I just, so I that's that's what like that's what does it for me. You know? I just feel like she's always seeking revenge on somebody or she's like always plotting something on somebody. And that's going to end up being it's her undoing. It's like she has... She always has this reasoning for doing something. Yep. And that's what I don't like. It's just, it's just always something with her. It's going to hurt a crap ton of people along the way, but I think she's going to end up... Now, have we missed any... We've got Sansa. She's there. She has... Yeah, that was my next thing. I was wondering, because, you know... John got all that uh, note from the Raven yep. to go visit Daenerys. And, you know, and she's been disagreeing it. with every movie he's made yes. since they made it to and Winterfell. that kind of annoyed me. Now. I'm just wondering, now that he's leaving to go there and she's basically in charge, I'm just wondering how she's going to do. Because you got pervy Peter Baelish. Yep, little you, you've got right there. Peter Baelish there. And, you know, his whole thing... He, he wants to sit on the Iron Throne, and he's going to do everything he can to get to that power. He's uh, a sneaky little oh, snake. Oh, yeah, he's a snake in the grass. Um, but, or in the snow now. Um, white snake. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I guess that's why they call him Littlefinger. 
But uh, I completely lost where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, for real, he... Here's the thing. And John threatened him, too. He did. To grabbed her. him by the throat and almost killed him. Can um, you blame him? <laughs> no. No, because, you know, Peter Baelish is like, oh, you know, I, I, I love Catherine and... You know, I love Sansa just the same. That is Sans the creepiest thing somebody could well, say. Well, no, he threw, basically threw Sansa at Ramsay. Oh, yeah, I married mean, her off to just... him, and that was some crazy stuff. Most To me, the most disturbing scene, forget the, you know, the flaying of the dragon scale flesh and all the nastiness there. The most disturbing scene to me was when Ramsay basically raped Sansa and made Theon Greyjoy watch from the corner. That was horrible. That, that was, was the most messed up crap I have ever seen in my life. That was actually the only, that's only like, that was the first time in Game of Thrones history I've actually cringed while watching. I was like, God, something's gotta happen to stop this. No, I just they went can't believe with... he threw his stepmom and her baby into the dogs and let the dogs hide them. Like, well, you know, poetic justice got him. Yes, it did. You know. Thank God. That, that was some good stuff. Because didn't Sansa throw him in there? Yes. Yep, after the battle was over and everything, it's like, hey, guess what? <laughs> Bye. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, here, here's the problem, though. And I really think, I feel horrible for uh, Jon Snow that he made this decision. But he told everybody that until his return, Sansa is in charge. Yeah, I'm just... What if he doesn't come back? That is true. Because I'll go ahead and tell you, Peter Baelish can manipulate Sansa a hell of a lot better than he can Jon Snow. Mm. And he's going to manipulate his way right into the leadership of Winterfell. See, is there any... Is there, did he leave anybody there... That was kind of like, I don't know, guiding her or like being at her side, kind of like protecting her. Brienne of Tarth. She's there. She ain't gonna let her out of her sight. Because remember, she swore an oath to protect her for the rest of her days. Mm hmm. If she don't, oh, uh, who's that dude? The wildling guy that has a thing for her. <laughs> the <dude. laughs> I can't remember the guy's name. But. I can't either, but it's great. I like that that one scene where he like she like looks over at him and he's he's like giving her that wide eyed yes. smiling grin and she's like ugh what no. you doing <laughs> oh uh, God we're just like throwing things Pretty around much. yeah we're we're probably gonna end up forgetting something but I, I Jesus, have my we've been going for more right than a half here. hour huh I have my highlight on right here well the part in episode one where Arya meets up with a little group and they sing the song to her mm -hmm. they got, got the campfire that dude was Ed Sheeran yep um, sure was. and there was actually an internet blow up like the night of the show people pissed off because he was part of it why? that he was on their set they just said it was an unnecessary appearance that yeah, they were like, oh, you know, he was on there singing. What's the, what was the point of that? Who wouldn't want to make a guest appearance in Game of Thrones? They just said I it was mean, unnecessary, pointless. Whatever. And me, I didn't even know. I've never seen him before. He might, he might be in another episode. I, have you read anything about? He might be in another. Who knows? And to be honest, that was kind of a surprise that he was in the first one. You know, people wasn't expecting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was kind of like what was it in Star Wars Episode Seven, where J.J. Abrams basically let like two dozen really popular people star in the movie, but they were like in stormtrooper helmets where you didn't know who they were, and people were all trying to figure out, oh God, which one's this guy? <laughs> I mean, there were like people like big name stars who you never in a million years would have figured for Star Wars, but they were there like in stormtrooper armor in some kind of heavy makeup where you didn't know who they were and like they mm -hmm. wasn't even credited but they were there they just, just wanted, wanted to be, be in star wars yeah um but yeah kind of the same thing here I, I i'd actually be interested to look and see what singers musicians artists celebrities actors whatever have appeared in game of thrones 
in the past, over the past six seasons, I'd be. So this is the, he's the only person that I can think of right now off the top of my head. Yeah, but I've never. There really might have it. been other appearances that you just overlooked. Well, up until what was the first? I actually believe last season was the first season of Game of Thrones I ever sat down and watched live as they happened. Season six was it because I had to binge watch one through five, and uh, but yeah, that I mean, I I never paid attention to like the internet buzz mm -hmm. for the first five seasons because I honestly never thought I would watch it. <laughs> I kind of got to that point where after about the fourth season, and I was like, eh, you know, there's already too many episodes out. I'm never gonna catch up. And then one day Once I did. Once you start watching more and more episodes, you just get hooked on it. Just... I'd be very interested to go back and watch them again. Mm -hmm. And see, now that I know what I know, how will those other episodes play out? Because you probably end up picking up on a lot of crap. Like, yeah. You know, there's a lot of characters. Holy crap, you know, I forgot about him. That's like right when, before this season started. Of course, I have HBO, and I can go back and watch whenever I want. Yeah. But they were replaying it on HBO, and I basically worry watched the first season over again, and I was picking out stuff that I realized I had forgotten by, you know, last season. And I was kind of like piecing well, crap, people together. There's stuff from season like, six I've forgotten, because, God, it's been a year and a half. Like, well, there's so, there's so much... Game, there's so much in Game of Thrones, I mean. <laughs> yeah, like, legitimately, we, there, there are six or seven solid plot threads going right now. Mm -hmm. At least half a dozen. And God only knows how many smaller ones scattered around that have mm -hmm. not been, you know, I mean, we've got Arya, we've got Sansa and Jon, we've got uh, Cersei, we've got uh, Jorah and Sam, we've got uh, we've got the whole deal with the Greyjoys. There's uh, Daenerys. There's, I mean, that's seven. That's just me being able to come up with them right off the top of my head. Yeah, and how, oh yeah, I forgot about about the whole thing with Euron Greyjoys. That oh my god. He's going to be a new villain this season, apparently, it seems. I don't think he'll last long. You don't think so? I really don't think so. Um, I, he's not as... It's almost like they didn't build him up like they did Ramsey. You know, mm -hmm. like Ramsey was really big on, like, what, seasons five and six. Uh, they didn't build this guy up much. I mean... He just seems like he's ruthless, like he doesn't care. Like he just... Yeah, he is, but he's he's also careless. He almost got killed during this battle. I'd say three episodes tops. Write it down. Three episodes <laughs> tops. He dies. Um, the whole thing where they're coming in on down on that ship and nobody's. I was sitting there. I was like, "What is going?" I couldn't tell what was going on. I didn't could tell know something who it was, was coming. I was like, "What is that?" I, I was like, is that a ship? I was like, that can't be aliens or anything. I couldn't tell. Well, it took me a second to figure out who the hell was on the ship. Like, I didn't know. I, I like, I didn't recognize the the coat of arms or whatever. I I had no clue. And then he just comes swinging down. Yeah. Kind of makes you wonder how they found him. This one is out in the dark and the fog and crap. Mm hmm That's why he's a sailor and not me. Um, Jeez. Anything else we need to cover? Because we've already gone way. almost 40 minutes. Let's <laughs> see. God help us all. Oh, yeah. Bran reached the wall. Yes. Bran did reach the wall. But he, he wasn't even addressed in this episode, was no, he? No. The most he... recent episode? No. I... No. Um, yeah, this he, was he the made first it, one. He made it to the wall, and they were like, he actually told them, you know, who he was and everything. Um, I do want to talk before we finish this one final fan theory that I would just about bet is going to happen. I just about be willing to bet on it. What? The Mad King went crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and was, they said like the last thing he was saying before he was killed was he was going around screaming burn them all. 
Like, burn them all, burn them all. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen that Bram Stark can send his essence or mind or spirit or whatever back in time, and it affects things. It, it affected Hodor. Mm -hmm. That was how that whole deal happened. And, you know, Hodor, you know, was saying, hold the door, and it went into his past self because he was doing that phasing thing that he does. And it really screwed up past Hodor. It was like some kind of weird paradox. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing is going to happen. I think Bran is going to be... I think everybody's going to show up. The dragons are going to show up to fight the White Walkers. And somebody during this battle is going to be screaming for the dragons to burn them all. And I think Bran oh, yeah. is going to be going back in time to the Robert's Rebellion where the Mad King lost his shit. And he's going to hear that and that's going to be what drives him crazy. It's going to wrap up and he's going to end up being the one who drove the Mad King mad. Oh, and wow. it's going to be like a loop. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ponder on that for a minute holy crap so that's what I think is going to happen and I kind of borrowed a little bit you know they were like oh wouldn't that be something you know if the you know the mad king was driven mad by Bran and I was like you know that might not be out of the realm of possibility mm -mm. that's what I'm thinking is going to happen is everybody and their brother is going to be at this final battle and while these dragons are going through cooking these white walkers somebody's going to be screaming burn them all mm -hmm. and he's going to do his little mind thing back in the past and it's going to end up driving the mad king mad and the mad king going mad is what's going to set off the entire chain of events that leads to game of thrones and it's just going to be one big time loop oh my god so just wait and see wait this and be see crazy any final thoughts sarah uh, what do you give these first two episodes <laughs> on a scale of one to ten because i'm going to go ahead and say these are probably about a nine and a half each for me um making sure i didn't miss anything and it's just talking about uh Daenerys. i will say Daenerys talking to all those women well, I will. I mean, it's really impossible for us to cover everything that happened in these episodes yeah. without legitimately spending two hours talking about <laughs> it. Um, I will say that I'm very surprised that we made it almost two thirds of the way through the second episode before we saw any naked people. Um, that is true. Yeah, that was very interesting because there was not any nudity whatsoever in the first episode. And it was what's her name with the unsullied soldier? I can't listen. Grey Worm and. Yes. Her name starts with the M. Sigh. Crap. Okay. What is her name? What are we looking at here? It starts with an M. Yeah, I don't... The lady who is the right-hand maiden of Daenerys Targaryen. I don't remember her name, but we'll figure this out eventually. I don't <laughs> think we're going to be here long it's enough okay. to do that. But, um... Her and, uh... You know, Grey Worm, like the right-hand, uh... Unsullied end up hooking up, yeah, the, <laughs> as best he can without the male equipment. Bless his heart. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> wow, weird. Yeah. All right, well, what do you give the episodes one to ten? Are they different? Or are you gonna group them both together like I did? Because they both had very, very good redeeming qualities, even. I give episode one a ten because the way it started out, just like I was like, holy crap! Come on, part of it is you were just pumped up for the season premiere. Well, I wasn't. But it wasn't what? I wasn't expecting Arya to be there. In <laughs> I actually, when I first saw it, I thought it was a flashback well, to see, right was, after I it I had happened. I was sitting there like, why is he going back to this? This happened a long time ago. Yep. But yeah, I give that one a 10 because the way it started was awesome. What about the second episode? It wasn't too bad. I'm going to give it a 9. Okay. So, a 9.5 is like your average. The ending, 
the ending was like, holy crap, what's gonna happen next? All those pe all those shit. How long even how many ships were oh, knocked down by that? Finally, in closing, one of the little plot points that need to be addressed was uh, the whole battle. No, the fact that Theon Greyjoy had the opportunity to save the day, and his. I don't know what's up with him. Maybe, you know, PTSD or something. And That's he just thinking. totally freaked when he put on the spot. He frightened. Jumped into the sea. And the last scene you see in episode two is him floating around in the sea as that ship is sailing off. And I'm like, is somebody going to pick him up? Well, see, people were saying, like, he didn't really have a way to defend himself. How? I don't know. Yes, he does. He can fight. That guy is like... I mean, he, he lost his genitals. He didn't... He didn't lose his fighting ability, I don't think. And there's also... What I saw people saying. Like, the guy could easily kill him, and then he could kill her, too. And there wouldn't be either one of them. But what people are saying is that he saved himself so he can go back and get everybody so he can tell Daenerys what happened out there on the sea so you think so there he may can have go been, back and save her so there may have been a rhyme to the stupidity like he that might have been a plan yeah okay it could happen I can okay I'll he looks very yeah. frightened but I mean that could be a possibility I I, I'll know. I'll bite on that one that yeah that, that sounds and the sands the the mother Yes. And the dagger girl are still alive, so they took he took them prisoner too, so I don't know who else he took prisoner. I know those two and Well, you know, the, the mother, you know, almost took part in a foreign invasion a little bit before that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then it was interrupted by cannon fire. Or whatever it is that they <laughs> shoot. Oh, I just, I just got what you meant. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> A little slow. It's all good. Well, you laughed like you thought you knew what I meant. No, but, but I, 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 yeah. All right. Well, this, you know, we probably should have done this live. That would have been. I tell you what, if you're here to watch Game of Thrones with us next Sunday, mm -hmm. we'll do a live reaction show immediately after the credits roll. There we go. Not promising anything, because we don't know what might happen, but that's that's what we're shooting for. We'll shoot for that. Everybody like our little Game of Thrones logo right there? Look at that. Ain't that just beautiful? And of course, Logan had to pop up and say hello before we uh, ended this video. Uh, anything else we need to discuss? Hello, Logan. I hope you're doing well. That is... I'll name you... Hi, hello, how are you doing? Logan oh. Lannister. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hello. All right, well anyway, <laughs> uh, that's it for our first Game of Thrones review. We have reviewed the first and second episodes of season seven. Long awaited episodes. Uh, and both very enjoyable. Very, yes, very good were. episodes. Like I said, these are payoff episodes. Cannot wait till episode three. Yeah, it's, the season's already packing a punch. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm Lonnie. Single Sarah, and, and this is Logan. Logan! He's, okay, yeah. And we, yeah, he's not down with that. And we are Untitled Nerd Network, brought to you by Infinity Flux at Hicks in Tennessee. And uh, this has been our Untitled Game of Thrones review. Mm-hmm. Yes. Logan Tale. Oh.